This is like the stuff where you put the gummy worms in. Yeah, like the dirt. This would be a fun thing to do if you were making this for kids. You could, you know, like a dirt with little gummy worms coming out. Not that that's my thing. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have another sneak preview from What's for Dessert to show you. This is a recipe that I made it, I really liked it, and then over time as I thought about it, I just like it more and more and more. It is my chocolate coops. It's a very fancy sounding dessert, but really it is layers of chocolate pudding, cream, and crushed up cookies, and it is a dessert that feels so homey, but fancy at the same time. At its core, it is just a fantastic chocolate pudding recipe, so I cannot wait to show you how to put it together. I had a lot of fun in What's for Dessert creating individual desserts, like little composed desserts that where each person gets their own portion. It also is a dish that really like celebrates flavors of chocolate. And I really didn't have so much chocolate in Dessert Person because it was so focused on like, you know, seasonal recipes and fruit. And in What's for Dessert, I wanted to really give chocolate its due. And so this is just like a straightforward, excellent chocolate pudding that you could just make on its own and enjoy or you can assemble them like I'm gonna do into little coops and it's just like such a fun celebratory dessert. For just the pudding, I have milk. This is two and two thirds cups. Eggs, specifically four yolks plus one whole egg. Three tablespoons cornstarch, that's the thickener. A quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Two thirds cup light brown sugar. Kosher salt, a teaspoon of instant coffee granules. You don't have to use it, that's optional, but coffee makes the chocolate tends to bring out the chocolate flavor. Then I have vanilla extract, four tablespoons of unsalted butter cut into pieces, and four ounces of semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate. So I really like to use the famous chocolate wafers, that brand that's like super thin, not too sweet, really chocolatey cookies. I could not find them at my grocery store, so these are where I literally scraped out the filling because it's the same flavor. It's that like black cocoa flavor that's not too sweet. In terms of special equipment, everything is super straightforward. It's an easy recipe. You'll need a medium saucepan for cooking the pudding with a whisk, a couple of mixing bowls, and then a hand mixer just for whipping the cream. So if you have a stand mixer, you could use that too. It's kind of a lot of cream, so you will most likely want a mixer. You could do it by hand, but it's gonna take a little bit of effort. I've been using hand mixers in a lot of my recipes lately, but in What's for Dessert, it is the only electric mixer that you will need. I would say like maybe even fully half the recipes you could just make entirely by hand. You don't need an electric at all. And then anytime you do need a mixer, it's just a hand mixer. No stand mixer required for anything. So time to assemble my chocolate pudding. I have my medium saucepan over on the burner. Then I have two bowls. So you'll need a medium bowl and a large bowl for this. In my large bowl, I'm going to put my four ounces of semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate. And then I'm gonna add my butter. So this is cold, which it's okay if it's room temp, but cold is better. So this is going to be the bowl where I put the pudding after it finishes cooking. Next, I'm going to make my sugar and starch mixture. So I have my brown sugar, then my cocoa powder, and cornstarch. Make sure you get all the cornstarch out. Then my instant coffee. And whisk all of this together to combine. So if you have any big lumps, just go in with your fingertips and break them up. You wanna have a mostly lump-free mixture. Any kind of smaller lumps are usually smoothed out with the whisk. So just break up any big clumps that you see. And then continue whisking until you have a super uniform mixture, just like that. You can set that aside. I am going to start heating my milk and salt on the stove top. So the milk goes in. Salt. So while that's heating, I am going to whisk together my eggs and that sugar and starch mixture. You don't want to do this step before you start to heat the milk. And it's even better to wait until it already comes up to a simmer and then you can set it aside. Because if eggs have prolonged contact with sugar, it can create like little um, hardened bits of yolk that will never kind of dissolve or smooth that in your pudding. So you wanna wait, you know, you can mix this ahead of time, but wait to add the eggs 
until your milk is coming up to a boil. So stir gently to combine, go slow. You can see it almost looks like brownie batter. It's really, really dark and a little bit liquid. So now I want to whisk really vigorously until this mixture is lightened in color. It'll pale several shades and is thick and it forms a ribbon off the end of the whisk. So I'll show you what that looks like. So that'll take a couple of minutes of whisking by hand. Maybe not that much, but you wanna take your time with this step. Yeah, like it's already paled. So this step is called blanching and that comes from the French word blanchir, which means like to whiten. And so it just means that we are whisking until this mixture gets really, really pale. Obviously when you don't have cocoa powder, it's like a more noticeable transformation because it really does kind of turn from yellow to whitish. So I'm gonna turn off my milk mixture because that is come up to a simmer. And my egg mixture is just about done. So I'll show you what a ribbon looks like. So I've whisked it, it's much paler now, and it's super thick. And when I lift it up with the whisk, it falls back onto itself and it sits sort of high above the surface of the mixture. And it takes a second to settle into the surface. So it makes this kind of like wavy, ribbony, texture. I'm going to slowly, I'm going to try to show you with my opposite hand, which is a better angle. I'm going to stream in the hot milk as I whisk. I poured in about two thirds of the milk and now the rest of the milk in the saucepan is going to go back on the burner and I'm going to transfer this mixture into the saucepan and cook the pudding all together. So go ahead and scrape all of this into the saucepan. I recommend cooking this over medium heat because it is easy to kind of overcook and scorch the pudding on the bottom. And so I'm going to stir constantly with the whisk to prevent that from happening. Make sure you're kind of scraping along the bottom. It's not only to bring the temperature of the eggs up, but having the mixture start out hot on the stove decreases the cook time. So you could like do everything cold and just mix it together, but it will just take longer to cook. So starting off with this hot, mixer means that we will get to that point of thickening a lot faster. So this will take a few minutes on the stove top. The foam on the surface will subside and will kind of be like absorbed into the pudding. It will hold the marks of the whisk. So I'll see that it will, which is just kind of another way of saying that like it holds its own shape. And so you don't want to stop whisking because you don't want anything along the bottom or sides to overcook. And I want to make sure that the cornstarch is fully activated. So it has that like maximum th thickening effect and I don't have like a runny pudding. And so I want to make sure that it's really at a boil. So I'm going to stop whisking once I start to see that thickening happening. And I'm going to look for a slow bubbling beneath the surface. And at that point, I'm going to cook it for like another 15 seconds just to guarantee that everything is at that temperature and then take it off. And that's why I have this bowl ready because as soon as it's done, I'm going to transfer it into that bowl. Is the stirring helping it solidify or is it just keeping it from burning? It's not just keeping it from burning, it's making sure that the temperature is equal everywhere. And as you're whisking, you can kind of change directions. I like to make figure eights sometimes, like this. I know it does smell like hot chocolate. Okay, so it's starting to thicken. Okay, so now that it's holding the marks of the whisk, see that slow bubbling? you're looking for active bubbling. That means it's at a boil. So stop whisking for a few seconds, wait to see that bubbling, then go ahead and whisk really vigorously for another 15 seconds, just to guarantee that all of that cornstarch is activated, then pull it off the heat. And you do not want to let it on the heat much longer than that, and you certainly don't want it to be still. You need to keep it agitating it constantly. So now we're gonna pour this directly into the bowl, and I'm gonna scrape the sides, but I'm not gonna scrape the bottom because there is almost always like a little bit of curdling that occurs on the very bottom of the pot. You know, you wanna avoid any sort of curdled bits getting in the pudding, but it's not the end of the world if it does. Because we're going to mix this all together, that will help to smooth out any bit of curdling so it doesn't affect the final texture of the pudding. But generally speaking, don't scrape the bottom. I think it's only been like a minute. It doesn't take long for certainly the butter to melt, but the chocolate as well. So now with that whisk, I'm gonna start mixing. Looks a little gnarly at first, but there's this really great moment where the chocolate starts to blend into the pudding. When does the ham mixer come in? The ham mixer doesn't come in until the cream. We don't need the ham mixer for any part of the pudding. So if you only wanted to make the pudding, it's done entirely by hand. You know, I'm sensitive to chocolate recipes. I don't like chocolate recipes that are too intense and to me like overpowering. 
And this is like a very chocolatey pudding and it's not too sweet, but to me it's not overwhelming. Like I could sit there and, you know, eat it. I don't want to feel like I have to, you know, like take a sip of water every bite. Add the vanilla now, two teaspoons. If you wanted to do like an upgrade on the recipe, you could certainly incorporate real, uh, real vanilla, like vanilla bean. And what I would do is scrape the vanilla bean into the milk at the beginning, throw the pot in as well, and then let that slowly come up to simmer before you make the pudding. But extract is great. So I'm gonna scrape this into a lidded container. It makes like a generous four cups. So a quart container is the perfect size. Ooh. Oh God, <laughs> a little, it's a little full. I'm just gonna leave the lid like that. It's just important that whatever you're using to cover the pudding, that it's in contact with the surface again so that that skin doesn't form. So now I'm gonna chill this. It should chill for at least four hours. It kind of depends on like if you put it in a container or if it's in a bowl, how wide the bowl is, how cold your fridge is, um, but you just want it to be cold and set when you go to assemble the coops. So I'm gonna throw that in the fridge. I actually made a batch last night, so it's just been hanging out. It's cold and ready to go. And now I'm going to move on to assembly. So I'll grab my coupe glasses, whip the cream, crush the cookies, and we'll make our coupes. Time for assembly. Again, I have the chilled pudding, my chocolate wafers, and my heavy cream. I'm gonna start by crushing up the cookies. You could do this by hand, but I like how quick it is just to like throw it in a bag and do a little bit of this. I just want small pieces. And when you're bashing, you can give the bag a little bit of a shake to get some of those larger pieces to rise to the top. So this looks good. I like having the mix of pieces. Like I have some little tiny crumbs and then I have some kind of medium pieces and some larger pieces. If you are gonna make this for kids, you might wanna sweeten the whipped cream a little bit. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do is whip the cream. I keep it unsweetened in the recipe. This is really a pretty like low sugar recipe. It's not very sweet. So maybe for kids, you would wanna add a little bit of sugar to the whipped cream just to make it like a little more palatable. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna whip the cream. This is one and two thirds cups. Make sure it's cold so it whips. Make sure you're working in a large bowl, a big wide one like this is good. I have the beaters on my hand mixer. And again, I'm gonna start out on low, medium, low. You don't wanna splatter everything. Then as it thickens, increase the speed. And I wanna go to soft peaks. Okay, perfect. So the last thing before I assemble is to stir the pudding to loosen the consistency and smooth it out. So if, now that it's nicely set, it's really firm now. I wanna loosen the consistency so that it's easier to portion. So that, you know, obviously the eggs are a thickener, the starch is a thickener, but also that chocolate and butter because it's solid when it's cold. That is also a thickener. So that contributes to the set of the pudding as well. If you just cover it with plastic in the bowl and chilled it that way, you don't have to, you know, you can just stir it right in the bowl. I just transferred it out. So you can see it's this beautiful, thick, but not like gloopy or starchy texture. It's really smooth and beautiful. I think it's like perfect pudding consistency. Oh, look how good it looks. See that? Doesn't it look delicious? My coupe glasses, of course you do not have to assemble these in coupe glasses. I'm calling them chocolate coupes. Coupes, backing up for a moment, is like a category of dessert. It's very unclear what the definition is. To my knowledge, it's just something assembled in a glass. Often there's fruit, sometimes there's ice cream. It's very imprecise. So really anything could be served in a coupe glass. If you don't have coupes, use any kind of serving glass. Wine glasses are fine, whatever you have is great. But I have four coupes. So I'm gonna start by portioning out the pudding. What you would do is basically divide about half of the pudding amongst your six serving glasses. So I have just like a little third of a cup. This is not really precise. You do not have to measure it out. So go ahead and do your first layer of chocolate pudding. So next, the cream. Same thing, you're dividing about half of the cream 
amongst your serving glasses. I only have four, so I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it. There's something really nostalgic tasting about it. Chocolate pudding is, you know, a sort of classic American dessert. But it really reminded me of like the refrigerator roll, which is the recipe printed on the back of the famous chocolate wafer box. That combination of chocolate wafers and whipped cream is so good and like not too sweet. It's just really kind of perfect and magical. Next comes the cookies. You could totally omit this if you wanted to. You could also use a different kind of cookie, but I really like the texture. I want that crunch. Then more pudding. So there's just two layers of everything in these coupes. Now coupe glasses have different volume capacities. These are, this looks to me like an eight ounce coupe. Some of them are a little bit smaller. You could do any size, it doesn't really matter. And so it just might mean that you have more portions because they're each, they're a little bit smaller than this. If you wanted to be really careful and precise about making layers, you could pipe this, I suppose. I never tried it that way, but there's no reason why you couldn't do that. So another portion of cream, the same amount, right on top. And this one I'm leaving kind of tall. Then the last step is the final sprinkling of chocolate cookies over top. It is a totally evergreen recipe. You could make this any time of the year. I'm gonna taste it, I'm so excited. This is another dessert that is so much about texture. Crunchy cookie, light, not sweet cream. And then you get to eat out of the coupe glass. Mm. No gummy worms? No gummy worms. Mm. It's so fun to eat. Mm. I love it so much. It really has that like cookies and cream flavor, but kind of sophisticated at the same time. Love the pudding. It's so smooth and silky and has really kind of pure, but not overwhelming chocolate flavor. A really like less sweet dessert. So I think this would satisfy those people who like really, really love the bitterness of dark chocolate. But to me, it's not bitter in like an off-putting way. So, so good, really fun to make, and something you can totally do ahead of time. If you wanted to, you can assemble these coops ahead, stick them in the fridge and serve them. I wouldn't let them sit for more than a couple hours before serving, because the cookies will soften, but I made these for dessert last New Year's Eve, and like we ate them for the next two days. So, it just will change a little bit over time. Thank you so much for watching. It is so exciting and special for me to be able to show you recipes from the new book. It's out November 8th. If you want to pre-order, check out the link below. I cannot wait to show you more. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.